All right, so we left off yesterday with the um, talking about the VAs and the lessons that you learn and how it might actually be more cost effective on a job basis to hire a VA in North America than one in India or China. So uh, he talked about cost per, per hour cost is not the ultimate determinant. That's how we left off. Second, the proof is in the pudding. It is impossible to predict how well you will work with a given VA without a trial. Luckily, there are things you can do to improve your odds. One of them is using a VA firm instead of a solo operator. That makes sense because they have multiple um, operators, and if that one quits or is unreliable, they'll just assign you a new one. Solo versus support team. Let's suppose you find the perfect VA. He or she is performing all of your non-critical tasks, and you've decided to take a much-deserved vacation to Thailand. Yay, Thailand. It's nice to know someone besides you will be... Oh, yeah? Uh, is that like a rim shot? A toilet flush to emphasize? Or oh, Thailand, she heard Thailand, she flushed. Uh, it's nice to know someone besides you will be manning the wheel and putting out fires for a change. Finally, some relief. Two hours before your flight from Bangkok to Phuket, Wow, okay, he's, talking, he's been to Thailand. Uh, you receive an email. Your VA is out of commission and will be in the hospital for the next week. Not good. Vacation FUBAR. I don't like being dependent on one person, and I don't recommend it in the least. In the world of high technology, this type of dependency would be referred to as single point of failure. Right? If that collapses, the whole chain collapses. I get it. I get his point. One fragile item upon which all else depends. In the world of IT, information technology, for those of you who all know that term by now, the term redundancy is used as a selling point for systems that continue to function if there is a malfunction or mechanical failure in any given part. In the context of VAs, redundancy entails having full fallback support. I recommend that you hire a VA firm like your man in India or Brickwork he talked about before. Um, they're also in the Philippines, I know. They're, it's huge. It's a big industry in the Philippines being a virtual assistant. Uh, I recommend that you hire a VA firm or VAs with backup teams instead of sole operators. Examples abound, of course, of people who have had a single assistant for decades without incident, but I suggest that this is the exception rather than the rule. Better safe than sorry. Besides simple disaster avoidance, a group structure provides a pool of talent that allows you to assign multiple tasks without bothering to find a new person with the qualifications. Brickwork and YMII, your man in India, uh, both exemplify this type of structure and provide a single point of contact, a personal account manager, who then farms out your tasks to the most capable people in the group and across different shifts. Cool. Uh, need graphic design? Covered. Need database management? Covered. I don't like calling and coordinating multiple people. I want one-stop shopping and, in, and I'm willing to pay 10% more to have it. I encourage you to be similarly pound-wise and penny-foolish. Team preference doesn't mean that bigger is better, just that multiple people are better than one person. Yeah. The best VA I have ever used to date is an Indian with five backup assistants under him. There can be more than, three can be more than sufficient, but two is towing the line. So he's using practical experience here to help you with uh, choosing your VA or VAs. The other thing I would mention is Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. They have a bunch of freelancers on there who will do tasks for as little as $5 and up to whatever, $50, $100, depending upon the complexity of the task. But, you know, 5 bucks an hour. For somebody who speaks excellent English um, without an accent, that might be worth it, even 10 bucks an hour. You know, like I said, the prices start at five. That's why it's called Fiverr. But you'll see when you look at individual tasks, they, you know, they say standard product is $15 and special product delivered in two days is $50, whatever. You know, they, they all set their own prices. They're freelancers. Um, so that's another resource to look at. The number one fear. Sweetheart, did you buy a Porsche in China? I'm sure you might have your fears. AJ certainly did. Okay, so that's an AJ Jacobs guy from Esquire who did a lengthy thing about his experience with VAs, personal and, and work. My outsourcers now know an alarming amount about me. Not just my schedule, but my cholesterol, 
my infertility problems. Well, if we didn't know about it before, now we do, right? Writing it in a book, dude. My social security number, my passwords, including the one that is particularly adolescent curse word. Sometimes I worry that I can't piss off my outsourcers or I'll end up with a $12,000 charge on my MasterCard bill from the Louis Vuitton in Anta Anantapur. Okay. The good news, and this is back to Tim now, the good news is that misuse of financial and confidential information is rare. In all of the interviews I conducted for this section, I could find only one case of information abuse, and I had to search long and hard. It involved an overworked U.S.-based VA who hired freelance help at the last moment. Commit to memory the following. Never use the new hire. Prohibit Never use the new hire. Never use the new hire. Okay, I guess he, you want somebody who's done it for a while, is what he's saying, experience. Prohibit small operation VAs from subcontracting work to untested freelancers without your written permission. The more established and higher-end firms, brick, Brickwork in the below example, have security measures that border on excessive and make it simple to pinpoint abusers in case of a breach. Employees undergo background checks and sign non-disclosure agreements in accordance with the company policy maintaining confidentiality of client information. Electronic access card for entry and exit to the building so you know it is an employee, somebody they can track who's handling the work. Credit card information keyed only by select supervisors. Removal of paper from the offices is permitted. Yeah, they do everything they can to guard. They don't make it easy to steal your data, basically. VLAN-based access restrictions between different teams. This ensures there's no unauthorized access of information between people on different teams in the organization. Regular reporting on printer logs, floppy drives, and USB ports disabled, so they can't make copies. BS779 certification for accomplished international security standards. Yeah, they make a lot of money doing this stuff, so they spend some money letting you relax and be in peace that you're not going to have a problem. Secure VPN connection, 128-bit encryption technology for all data exchange. Yeah, pretty standard. I bet there's a fair chance that sensitive data is 100 times safer with brickwork than on your own computer. Yeah. Especially if you don't have something like zone alarm, you know, of a firewall blocker. Uh, still, information theft is best, best thought of as inevitable in a digital world. And precautions should be taken with damage control in mind. There are two rules that I use to minimize damage and allow for fast repair. Never use debit cards for online transactions. Oh, so did he cop. <laughs> she, she thought she could just sneak in there and not, not be noticed. Oh, look at you, sitting behind the door so we can't see you. Shit. Shy girl. Never use debit cards for online transactions or remote assistance. Reversing unauthorized credit card charges, particularly with American Express, is painless and near instantaneous. Recovering funds withdrawn from your checking account via unauthorized debit card use takes dozens of hours in paperwork alone and can take months to receive, if approved at all. If your VA will be accessing websites on your behalf, create a new unique login and password to be used on those sites. Most of us reuse both logins and passwords on multiple sites, yeah, especially those of us who have a CRS and can't remember shit. Um, if needed, note that this is particularly important when using assistants who have access to live commercial websites, developers, programmers, etc. If information or identity theft hasn't hit you, it will. Use these guidelines and you'll realize when it happens that, just like most nightmares, it's not that big a deal and is reversible. So I've been hit a couple of times using my debit card, not online, not for VAs, but just using it, well, using it online for my purchases, uh, using it at gas stations for gas. Sooner or later, they get captured. They all do. I've had it happen three, four times when I was living in America. Haven't had it happen here yet, um, which is good. Uh, so every year, I would go to the credit union, to Star Credit Union, which I used as my main bank, and I would change my card. I would just go in and tell them, you know, I lost my card, my card got washed, the strip is worn out and it won't swipe anymore. And they would issue me a new card. And with a new card was a new card number. And that killed 
all my charges from the previous year at gas stations and online, Amazon, Walmart.com, whatever, um, that I had made, which is cool. I mean, when I say kill, I mean anybody who had captured that number that last year, they couldn't use it. When they try to use that number to authorize a purchase in my name, it wouldn't work because that card was dead inside the system of iStar. So that's a tip for you. Once a year, just go tell your bank, hey, I lost my card or... It's, it doesn't work. I washed it by mistake, and the strip doesn't work. It's bent. It's cracked. Whatever. Make up some excuse why you need a new card, and they will issue a different card with a different number, the number of credit. Still the same account behind it, but the credit card number, the debit card number, will be different, and that's that's it. That's all you need to do. It will have a different CVC code, the little three-letter code on the back. It will have a different expiration date. So all of a sudden, you're starting with a clean slate. And I, once a year, every single year, I would do that. And they, they knew after, you know, 10 years what I was doing. They don't, they don't give a shit. It's easy for them to, to create a card. They do it right in the branch now. It used to be they mailed it to you. Now, now they do it right there on the spot. So cool beans, good stuff from Timmy. And um, we will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one.